R9 begins with the main character, Tomino Basara, having a meal with his father. His father told him that he remembered wanting a little sister when he was 10 years old. So he made a big announcement. He would soon have stepsisters. This surprised Basara because they had always lived alone, and now he found out that his father was getting married again. Basara then walked into the bathroom, not noticing the sign on the door that said, Door broken. He opened it and found a girl doing his thing. She was about to scream but he covered her mouth and tried to explain himself, but she ended up hitting him. Before things could escalate further, they were interrupted by Basara's father, who had another girl. It is then that our protagonist discovers that these two girls are what his father calls his stepsisters. They introduced themselves as young Maria Narus and red-haired Mayo Narus. The father explained that her mother was currently abroad, so they had to take care of her. Later, we see them moving into a new house. The next day, Bixara was awakened by his stepsister Mio in a special way. She noticed a computer game on his bed, and when he tried to explain to her that he didn't play the game, he tripped and fell on her, which made her angry and think he was a As Mio leaves his room, our protagonist remembers his father's explanation that they must support the girls because they have been attacked before. Due to the trauma, Maria didn't even go to school and couldn't be left alone since her mother was away. Basara decided to take up the responsibility of living with them. When Basara walked into the living room, she found Maria eating breakfast. She was wearing a questionable apron. She started teasing him about the games he played her. Just then, Mio and her father come in and misunderstand the situation. After the move, her father took a family photo and Basara realized that the two girls were now his family. Later, our protagonist and Mio go shopping, and when he leaves them alone to get their bikes, some start hunting them. Bessar returns to protect her, fights her off, then gets on his bike and leaves. On the way, Mayo sincerely apologized to him. Before remarking on their journey home, they stopped at viewpoint to admire the city's scenery. He suggests coming back in the evening to get a better look, but notices that Mayo still seems sad. He comforts her and says they should support each other as a family. Mio understands him, calls him big brother, and asks him to forget what happened in the bathroom and room, but he refuses. When they return home, they are surprised by unexpected news. Their father is also leaving to pursue a freelance career in Dubai, leaving Basara behind to care for his daughters. They watch him leave with grim expressions. The girls remained silent as Basara walked into their room and suggested they order food. Mayo eventually tells him to leave the house. Maria then uses magic to reveal that they are demons and Mayo is the daughter of the demon king. It also explains the existence of gods and heroes. Her house now becomes her base, and she attempts to cast a spell to make our protagonist leave, just like they did to her father. She can claim that her mother never existed. During the barrier, Bixara seemed to obey, but to their surprise, he dodged their attacks and revealed himself to be a hero. However, instead of defeating her with a magic sword, he decided not to waste time and money, spared her, and asked her to leave his home. After the conflict, Bexara felt a sharp pain in his arm, recalling a time when he seemed to have escaped from the hero village as a child. He calmed down when he realized he no longer had these abilities, but the full context remains unclear. He calls his father to clarify the situation and admits that he pretended to be bewitched and brought the girls home because Mayo is the daughter of the demon lord Wilbert. Wilbur is a pacifist demon lord with many enemies who want to take his throne. In order to protect Mio, he sent her to the human world. He died a year ago and now these enemies are looking for Mio before she fully develops her powers, destroying them and preventing her from seizing her father's power. Meanwhile, Mayo and Maria are contemplating finding a new home and base of operations when several demons suddenly appear and attack them. After Bessara listened to his father's explanation, he received a message asking him to find them. When Mayo is pushed away by the demon, he finds her. Our hero catches them in the air on his bike and defeats the demons with his sword. After the battle, he told them both to go home. When asked, he responded that he wanted his family back home and showed them a family photo his father had given him. While Mayo was in the bathtub at home, Basara was chatting with Maria. He explains to her that he saved her because like his father Kim, he always protected the people he knew, even if they had left the village and were now living normal lives. Since Mio took a shower very late, Maria took the opportunity to bring the things back into the house and Besara apologized to Mio. Meanwhile, Mayo remembers the attack and thinks she's not that powerful compared to him. As our protagonist apologizes, Mio becomes overheated from the shower and passes Besara goes to the bathroom to check on her, but she refuses his help and asks him why he's bothering because she cheated on him. Besara replies that he also hid the secret of becoming a hero from her and understands that she did so to protect him. He explained that although their parents' marriage no longer existed, they were now a family. Living together and protecting each other makes them a family. Maria arrives and sees them, and is relieved to learn that they are okay, though she asks Basara about the technique he used to neutralize their magic. 
He decided it was luck and left. That night, Mio looks at a broken picture frame containing a picture of her parents and remembers what happened to them. Maria enters her room and Mio takes the opportunity to ask our protagonists if they really want them to be a family. Maria noticed the framed photo that Bessara gave her. Maria advises Mio to accept the man's help because he really cares about her, and they don't pretend to be nice to them. Our princess agreed and Maria came up with an idea. We later see Mio and our protagonist in a ritual circle where they will sign a master-servant contract, although in reality the imp explains that this is just a formality to stay connected no matter what. To do this, he had to kiss her hand, but a mark suddenly appeared on Bissara's hand. Maria explains that she made a mistake and now Mayo must kiss his hand. Mio began to scold him and when the mark began to fade, she failed to kiss his hand in time, causing her to fall to the ground and be cursed for her rebellion and disobedience to her master. Since Maria is a and uses her own magic to prepare for the ritual, Maria explains that the curse is for to experience too much pleasure. To stop the curse, her master must her until she accepts him as her master. He reluctantly starts her until she finally calls him brother, which is exactly what she's always wanted to do. Maria then explained that she hadn't mentioned the curse before so that Bessara wouldn't change his mind, but that it was necessary to know where Maya was in case anything went wrong. She warns that if Maya resists, the curse will return. Maya wakes up and takes Maria with her to punish her for her behavior. The next day, they went to school and Maria pretended to be an adult using a fake ID. At school, Mio told his stepbrother to stay away from her and they both agreed not to let anyone know they lived together. Bessara remembers the curse and it will come back if she has any thoughts of rebellion. In the classroom, they realized they were in the same class and Mr. Sakazaki Nomoru introduced our boy and asked the class representative Nanaka to give him a tour of the school. Nanaka stood up and hugged him, and then he remembered that she was an old acquaintance named Yuki. However, Mio becomes jealous and eventually tells everyone that they live together. This isolates him from the other male students who are angry with him and Mayo still feels uneasy. At lunchtime, a man named Takigawa Bezsara introduced himself and they went to the rooftop to eat. Takigawa explains that he came to the school a year ago and everyone resented him because he became friends with the school's princesses Mio and Nonaka. After school, Mayo is still angry, which Maria notices. She goes to pick her up and our protagonist is talking to her about Yuki, when she suddenly asks him to talk to her alone. In a cafe, and they realize how much they have changed in the five years since they last saw each other. Yuki asks our protagonist not to get too close to Mio. Basara discovers that Yuki has been sent to monitor Mio. Both Maria and the fake sister overhear the conversation, causing the curse to be activated, and they believe Yuki is spying on them. Mio feels uncomfortable when she learns that Yuki is also a hero of the village. Meanwhile, Basara explains to Yuki why he and Jin want to protect the girls, even though he's no longer as strong as he once was. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise and Mayo rush out of the cafe. Maria chases her and admits that now she doesn't know how to face him, now that she knows what he did for her. Maria encourages her to trust him and comes up with an idea that could help her do something for him. Bessara also tells Yuki that he still carries the burden of what happened five years ago. Yuki reminds him that he saved her, but he feels different with Mayo because she's fighting for her life, which is why he wants to protect her. Meanwhile, Maria convinced Mio to do something special for her husbands in the bathroom. As night falls, Basara bids Yuki farewell and tells her not to get involved in the demon problem as he will take care of her. However, Yuki activates her powers and destroys a low-level demon with her sword. She warns him that Mayo's power will attract demons, and if they start harming humans, she will do whatever it takes to protect Mayo. Later that night, Basara explains to the girls what happened to Yuki, and they ask him to strengthen their bond as they will fight together. He agreed, and the three of them prepared to take a shower. In the bathroom, Mio starts wiping his back with her but he tells them to behave because he brought a cake. Mio walked into the bathroom with the cake, but he tripped and part of the cake fell onto her arm. The girls then started each other's cakes. Then our guys lost control, stood up, smeared cake all over them and scolded them for being so s He then wakes up in Maria's bed and Maria explains to him that when he got up in the he had a and passed so this part was just a dream. But he still subconsciously put his hand on her he takes advantage of the fact that Mayo is sleeping in another room and asks Maria for help. He was very tired from class the next day, which made Mayo even more jealous. Takigawa appears and tells Basara that the teacher asked him to help Yuki with her summer homework, which sparks Mayo's jealousy and activates her curse. Mayo insists that Basara leave, but he realizes what is happening and refuses, causing her to f*** from the curse. He takes her to the infirmary and talks to the school nurse Chizato Hasegawa, who advises him to find out who his allies and enemies are. While in the infirmary, he received a call from Takagawa, telling him that he had been taken care of. 
However, our man tells Mio to call Maria, and she complains about this little devil who is always sleeping. Outside, our hero talks to Maria on the phone while fetching water. Maria says she will pick her up later when Takigawa arrives and tells him that Yuki visited Mio not long ago, which surprises him since he didn't see her. Suddenly, he spots several demons and protects his friends by activating his sword and defeats them to reach Mayo's room. But when we arrived, our girl was nowhere to be seen. On the roof of the school, Mayo and Yuki argue over Basara. Mayo tells Yuki that Basara protects her because he considers her family. This triggers Yuki and a fight breaks out between the two. Yuki reveals how he saved many of his comrades from the village by stabbing them, which left him weakened. She explains that summoning his sword will cause him pain. He then comes over and tries to calm the situation, but they are interrupted by a masked demon. The demon taunts Basara, revealing his banishment from the hero clan and his protective role towards Mio, the demon king's descendant. He explains that he fights Maria every night to stop the demons and prevent them from becoming a threat to humanity. Mio is shocked, but our hero attempts to attack the demon, but is overwhelmed, causing him to tell her to give up her powers. Then another demon appeared behind her and attacked, but Basara intervened and took the blow, causing him to be injured in the back. Guy. The mysterious masked demon tells them that he didn't think Bessara could be so vulnerable, but Yuki gets angry and defeats the shadow demon that attacks him. The shadow demon then asks Mio to think about whether she should keep things as they are and leave. Maria manages to stabilize the protagonist in her home, but Mio can't stop thinking about what the mysterious demon said. She decided to go to bed, leaving Maria alone with him. Bessara suddenly woke up and admired how quickly he recovered. He explains that the hero received intensive training from an early age recalling how he was educated and how the village elders believed he had a great future due to his powers. However, in one incident, a hero unleashed the holy demon's sword and became possessed by a demon, wreaking havoc on the village. He activated his destructive power to protect Yuki and reduce everything to ashes. Back in the present, Besara asks about Mio and Maria tells him that she has a fever and is resting in her room. When they checked on her, they found she was gone. Maria asked her stepbrother to find her through her contacts. Meanwhile, Mayo arrives in the forest and encounters a mysterious demon. They start fighting as she realizes she is invulnerable. She surrenders and he puts demonic handcuffs on her and opens a portal to the demonic realm. Just then, Yuki arrives and starts fighting the demon and has a great battle. But just when the demon is about to launch a fatal blow, our protagonist appears with a sword and displays a power called Expulsion Transfer, which can neutralize any attack and send its energy to the zero dimension allowing they viewed him as a demon. This leads them to try to capture him. He also gained ownership of the sword. Bessara destroys the mysterious demon's attack and fights him. When it turns out they can't defeat him, Maria appears and defeats him together. But another shadow demon appears and stabs our guy with his sword, causing him to fall to the ground. Mio is outraged by this and unleashes her powers to destroy the demon and everything around her. Bessara then walks towards her and she tells him that she can't control it and will hurt him. He refuses, explaining that she is his sister, and he will protect her even if he has to turn his back on the world. Mayo accepted and activated his exile shift, taking control of her uncontrollable powers and teleporting her to the Zero Dimension. Later, Yuki comes to the protagonist's home to pick up medicine from his village, while her male friend is still recovering from his previous efforts. As she leaves, she realizes that Basara now has control over his powers and is happy about it. A week later, our heroes return to school with Mayo who excuses her absence by claiming they have the summer flu. In class, Basara came to the rooftop to confront Takigawa and discovered that Takigawa was the mysterious demon. Instead of fighting, our hero proposed a truce as his enemies failed to get Mio to unleash her powers. They agree to pretend nothing happened, but the demon then reveals that Zorja is the one who wreaked havoc on our heroine's house and parents. Later, the now-human demon walks past Maya without arousing any suspicion and she approaches Basara to thank him for saving her and even attempts to kiss him. But Yuki interrupts her and brings her rival lunch to eat. She said she also wanted to have lunch with our husbands, but she had nothing to eat. Maria then brings more lunch for the girls and tells Mio that Basara must feed them due to Maria's curse. He refuses and Maria tells Yuki that he is the master, causing the three girls to argue over who he belongs to. Meanwhile, Kim is in the forest, talking to the man spying on the children. This person revealed that he knew Basara's potential because he was Jin's son with another woman. After hanging up the phone, Kim believed his son was trying to escape his fate. Basara is woken up by Maria, who starts teasing him, and he playfully pushes her away. He then entered the bathroom and unexpectedly found Mio. Frightened, she slipped and fell on him, sparking an argument. 
He assures her that he has no intention of crossing any boundaries with her, and realizes that Maria is behind this situation. However, Maya remembers that this isn't the first time this has happened, and as punishment, she electrocutes Basara with her own power. Afterwards, he attempts to take a bath to relieve the pain, and Yuki unexpectedly joins in in the bathroom. She explained that Maria let her in and asked her to give him a bath like she had done as a child. He refuses, but Yuki is upset because he takes a shower with other girls instead of her. She attempts to take bolder action if he doesn't agree, to which Basara reluctantly agrees. At this point, Mio walked into the bathroom and tried to apologize to her stepbrother. However, she notices a female uniform in the bathroom and walks in on him and Yuki. She becomes jealous, triggering a curse. Maria noticed the curse and filmed the scene. In response, Besara locks Maria in the shower, takes Mio away, and leaves Yuki waiting in the living room. Later, he invited Takishuan to have dinner together and thanked Takishuan for completing his school obligations a few days ago. During the meal, Takigawa explains the nature of the curse and the master contract to his new ally, while recalling what he had to do that morning to appease Mio's curse. Takigawa explains that if Mio falls into the hands of her enemies, she may end up after him because of the like properties of the curse. However, Takigawa refused to reveal more details because it was an unpleasant matter. The former mass demon also mentioned that Jin is famous in the demon world, and they may send more observation reinforcements because they believe Mayo has awakened the power of the ancient demon king. This will make it harder for them to work together in the future, as they may send out more powerful demons. During their conversation, Sister Hazagawa joins them and mentions that she knew Besara's father and liked his photos. There is a photo of Jin and the boss's friend in the restaurant. After the toast and meal were over, they went their separate ways. Takigawa left to take care of some things while Besara stayed with Hazagawa. She asked about their previous conversation and he tells her it was about a game. Our man gets serious, contemplating the possibility of losing Mio. Hazagawa hugged him. Understanding the burden he had to take care of his two sisters, she bade him farewell and gave him a special blessing unique to the village. Later in the afternoon, Takigawa, who was wearing a mask, met the demon Varga who was also monitoring the target. Varga disappears to take a closer look, then Zest, Marco Zorge's right-hand man appears and tells Takigawa that she received direct orders from His Majesty. Back home, Bissara talks to Maria about the curse while Mio takes a shower. He realizes that Maria believes that he can save Mio if she falls into enemy hands. They agree to abide by the contract to become stronger and Maria suggests playing her games to help Bissara learn how to seduce women. Mayo interrupts them, sees them together, becomes jealous, and uses Maria to punish her. Meanwhile, a demon appears on the street and is about to attack a woman, but Kurumi and her team intervene and defeat the demon. Kurumi tells another hero, Shaiba, that Mayo is now the target that must be eliminated. The next day at school, some boys tried to be our boys but were stopped by the teacher sent by Yuki. The girl then asks Basara on a date, but without them realizing it, the three heroes are spying on them and planning to defeat Mio Pity. During the date, they came to a clothing store and Pissara felt like he was being washed, but he ignored it. Mayo and Maria suddenly appear, supposedly taking a walk, but in reality they are f***ing them. However, Yuki interrupts Mio and asks her to help choose clothes. After trying on a few outfits, the girl realized that she actually wanted to try on clothes for her next date. Then Kurubi shows up, tells Yuki to stop messing around, and takes her away. The boys went to find her, but she didn't answer their calls. Basara begins to think that it would be easier to find Yuki if he and Yuki had the same contract. Suddenly, the space around them begins to change and the boys dodge Waima's attacks. They suspect he did something to Yuki and start attacking him, but they don't do much damage. Finally, Lung, one of the heroes, froze Varga and destroyed him. Three heroes then appear and inform them that Mayo is now a target to be eliminated. They also reveal that Yuki is Kurumi's sister, and warn Basara that if he interferes, they will become his enemies. Despite this, Besara agrees to protect Mayo. Before they begin fighting, Shaiba destroys the space barrier. Shaiba explains that in order to fight properly without endangering others, they need to go to another place with a stronger barrier. He promises to let them know when he has a 3 on 3 match with Yuki. That night, Besara talks to his father, who tells him that the village elders went too far in releasing Shaiba from prison. Although Besara won't join the fight, Besara's father advises him to defeat everyone, including Yuki, since the village is the one who banished him. So the three of them started training all night. After it was over, Basara explained his strategy for defeating the girl to make himself feel more comfortable. Meanwhile, Kurumi scolds her sister for spending time with Mayo and reminds her that she is a hero. Elsewhere, Takashi and Shaiba discuss how Basara needs to find a way to defeat them. Although Shaiba has been friends with Takashi since childhood, he remembers that he has hurt many people in the village, which is why Takashi hates him. 
Later, Maria came out of the shower wrapped in a towel and gave her stepbrother warm milk. After they talk, she suggests that he should be more confident with Mayo in order to build more trust and become stronger. However, he just wants to protect her, which naturally inspires trust. Maria then sits on Basara, claiming that this will make her more powerful as a Mio, who overhears their conversation in the bathroom, is angry, but admits that she also wanted to do this in order to become stronger. After playing for a while to build her confidence, Mayo's neck began to glow, and Maria explained that her confidence had reached a new level, and that it made her stronger. Mayo believes they can win now. The next day at school, Mayo was having lunch with her friends, and Besara's friends ask him about the upcoming battle. Not knowing the details, our hero tells him to inform him, but warns him that he will eliminate the heroes, including Yuki, if they try to harm her. Before he left, our man also warned his friend that if he interfered, he would have to confront him. Later, as he considers meeting Mayo and Maria to learn more about the battle, Yuki appears and takes him to a dark room. In the room, Yuki asks him to stay away from the upcoming battle, but he refuses. She acts nonchalant and reveals the location of the fight before leaving. He stopped her and gave her the keys to his house. He expressed the hope that she could continue to visit him as he did in the village. Yuki tries to tell him that it might not be possible after the battle, but he says he doesn't want this to be the end, which makes Yuki feel sad before leaving. As night falls, the boys arrive at the designated battle site, where they meet up with the heroes who are ready to begin the battle. The battle begins with Takashi activating his white tiger, creating a protective barrier around the real city, keeping Shaba away from it. At first glance, Besara appears to be fighting Yuki, but he actually begins fighting Kurumi while Takashi fights Mayo and Maria. Meanwhile, Spall is in the real world, observing everything from the outside. He noticed Mayo and Maria starting to run, buying time for Pesara's arrival. They enter a store and Takashi realizes that they intend to fight to the west, which prevents him from using White Tiger from a distance. Despite this, Takashi captures Maria and Mayo. On the other hand, Besara continues his battle with Kurumi. He hesitates to hurt her and eventually uses his banished transformation to defeat her, but saves her before she falls to the ground. But suddenly Yuki appears, attacks him with a sword, and then uses magic incense to put him to sleep. She left him in the care of her sister, who set off to join the others in the battle. Later, Mayo manages to submerge Takashi, but he fights back with White Tiger, diverting all the water away from the building and saving himself. He then attacks the girls, believing he has won, but with Shaba's help, he realizes they have escaped. As Takashi chases them and prepares to attack, Yuki intervenes and fights Takashi, declaring that she will protect those Besara protects, feeling that he has not betrayed his village, on the contrary, and vice versa. Meanwhile, Maria urges Mio to visit our heroes while she helps Yuki fight Takashi. As Kurumi watches him sleep, she realizes that he too is suffering from the events of five years ago. Mio comes over and tells Kurumi that she doesn't want to fight. Instead, she tries to wake our guys up, and even though Kurumi thinks it won't work, our demon princess persists. Basara was tortured in his sleep until Mio appeared, hugged him, and asked him to protect Yuki and Maria, only to wake him up, much to Kurumi's surprise. While all this is happening, Takashi is still fighting the two girls and gaining the upper hand. But just as he prepares to attack Yuki, Lucky's half-brother intervenes with his sword and uses a new fighting style to dodge Takashi's attack. He pushes Takashi to the limits of the White Tiger, while Shippa looks on and realizes that Besara is doing this to activate the spear's defense mode, releasing a massive tiger-like beast, the White Tiger. Our protagonist tells the girls that half of the battlefield lies within the White Tiger, and if the barrier is broken, the beast will be released into the real world. So Heat and Yuki attack to defeat White Tiger, and eventually succeed. After the battle, the boys gathered around Takashi who began berating our hero for everything he had done, claiming that he would suffer, just like he made his friends suffer. However, Mio knocks out Takashi with one punch, but our hero stops her and tells Takashi that he will defeat him every time he chases her. Eventually, Shaiba appears, the barrier was destroyed along with White Tiger, and tells them that the mission has been aborted, and they must return. He orders Kurumi and Yuki to come back as well. Despite Basara's attempts to intervene, Shaiba unleashes a threatening force, making the girls obey him to prevent him from getting into trouble. After Yuki leaves, Basara acts quiet and thoughtful in class, causing even Maeva's friends to notice and ask her if everything is okay. On the way home, he realizes that 10 days have passed since his date with Yuki, with whom Mio tries to stay close. When they return home, our protagonists are surprised to find Yuki there, who explains that the village will pretend nothing happened, and that the order to harm our demon princess has been lifted thanks to Jin's call. Besara, curious about the deal his father made, decided to put it aside and hug Yuki, who took the opportunity to kiss him. However, they are interrupted by Mio, who starts arguing with Yuki. 
Maria appears and reveals that she let Yuki in because both Basara and Mio missed her. Yuki surprises everyone by telling her that the elders allowed her to live with them in order to keep an eye on Mio. Maria then shows them a secret video of how Basara calmed Mio's curse, much to the boy's embarrassment. Yuki starts for clothes and says she wants to do the same thing, which gets Maria excited even though our demon princess stops her. Over dinner, they discuss the master-servant contract which allows them to keep track of each other's whereabouts and grow together. Yuki agrees to make the same deal with her childhood friend the next night. The next day at school, the girls were standing very close to Basara when someone called Maria and asked her to meet them behind the school. As they prepare for swimming lessons, Yuki expresses her excitement about sealing the deal that night. Meanwhile, in the boys' locker room, Takagawa discusses his scar with our hero, but the humans notice Maria running through the school. He demands an apology from Takagawa and then goes to find Maria. He later confronts her in the classroom, but she claims she was just checking school security in case Maya was In the end, they walked around the school together and went to the women's bathroom. Maria suddenly noticed something and ran away. Basara followed her to the roof and found two young men playing around. Meanwhile, Mayo and Yuki compete against each other in swimming lessons, resulting in a draw. After the course, Maria continued with our captain for a safety check. They reached the girls' locker room and Maria starts teasing him. When they heard the girls coming in, they ducked into Mio's locker. Maria continued teasing him in the locker and making him feel uncomfortable. Later, our protagonist opens her locker and notices its interior. She acted like everything was fine and told friends she was feeling a little under the weather and would go to the infirmary alone. As soon as the girls left, Mio took Basara and Maria out of their lockers and scolded them. However, her curse is activated, and Maria suggests they level up together. At Mayo's request, our lucky guy took Maria's advice and took a key shower before they both got off. Later in the classroom, they discover that Maria was missing. Basara asked Yuki to go to her house with Mayo while he went to find Maria. He found Maria talking to Takigawa, which worried him. He rushes to greet her and finds her on the stairs, but she calms him down by telling him she's lost and asking a man, who turns out to be a friend of our hero, for directions. On the way home, Maria asked to hold Basara's hand and Basara agreed. They walked home hand in hand. Meanwhile, the current Demon King watches a video of our protagonist and realizes that while she has the power of the previous Demon King, humans have powers that can counteract it, which piques his interest. Since Sekigawa was watching them, he wasn't worried because the demon was of a low level. Therefore, the devil intends to put his plan into action to achieve everything he desires. The night of the contract begins, but Yuki refuses to kiss Basara's hand to avoid witnessing what happened to Mio. He has to calm him down when he activates her curse, but this time Yuki starts to escalate as our man calms her down. Maria suggests that he go to the bathroom with Mayo and Yuki to further strengthen themselves and they agree. Maya was nervous, but everything went smoothly and the results were a bit surprising. Zeus looks on and introduces himself to Basara as her master. The next day, Mayo and Yuki are closer than ever in gym class and Takigawa accidentally injures our protagonist with a ball. Takigawa then complimented him on his training skills, but this actually angered him and brought him to the infirmary. Hasegawa was there to tend to his injuries and advise him not to overexert himself. She also said that if he hurt himself again, he should come to her and not remove the bandages until she asked him to. Later, in the men's locker room, Mayo's friend Sakaki visits Basara, confesses her feelings to him, and even throws herself at him. However, Yuki and Mayo interrupt them and Mayo runs away after seeing this. Yuki helps Basara escape from Sakaki, then realizes that Mayo's curse has been activated. She reaches the roof of the school where she meets Maria, who puts her to sleep while a voice tells her that Zorgia will ease her pain. Basara arrives to find Maria taking Mayo with her with Jester's help, but they manage to escape and Basara loses track of them. Mio begins to remember her past, including the moment Zorgia betrayed and her heroic parents. When she wakes up, she sees Maria, who she thinks is her cousin. However, Maria explains the truth and they escape together. When Mio wakes up, she finds herself handcuffed and facing the demon Zorgia. Despite her resistance, he immobilized her with a spell and prepared to take advantage of her. Just then, the voice of the current demon lord interrupts Leohart, revealing that he is not just interested in Mayo's power. Zorja went to the demon lord's aid and assigned Maria to look after her demon lord. Meanwhile, Basara tries to get Mayo's whereabouts from Takigawa and learns that Maria used to work for Zorja but escaped with our demon princess. However, Zorja Maria's mother and forced her to hand over her former boss. Zorja wants our girl to be his servant and plans to d her, which might drive Mayo crazy. Basara decides to duel Zorja. Returning to Mio, Maria tells her that Basara will not find her there or through her contract, meaning she cannot escape. She puts Mio back to sleep. 
Outside Zorja's castle, Takagawa, alias Lars, arrives and demands that Jester let him see Mio in exchange for handing over our guy, who he captures and Hakagawa reveals to Basara that Zorja was summoned by the king because of him, and that he could have told the king about Mio's c***ing and betrayal. As a result, Jester protected him and stood by him. Meanwhile, Maria is devastated by Mio's betrayal and remembers how her mother was c***ed and she has to accept Zorja's orders again. Suddenly, Jester appears with a sleeping Basara and orders Maria to seduce and control his mind. Later, our hero wakes up to find himself in shackles. Maria tells him that they are at Zorja's villa and begins to seduce him into taking control of his mind. Basara tells her that he already knows about her mother's thing and that she is not alone. Everyone is ready to help her. However, Maya refuses and is shown a key that unlocks her power, transforming into a larger and tells him that she will baptize him as a Meanwhile, Yuki is in the forest, remembering Basara's plan to save Mio, even though it was dangerous. Back at the villa, the guy succumbs to Maria's but manages to escape her spell. He tells her that he wants to help her and save her. He then draws his sword, and although Maria thinks they are about to fight, he simply plunges the sword into the ground and declares that he will save her. However, Maria continued to attack him. Suddenly, Yuki senses the presence of the protagonist and sees Zorja's mansion appear out of thin air. Meanwhile, Zest considers stepping in because she shouldn't be siding with our husbands. Yuki attacks Jester and discovers Zorja's mansion, much to her surprise. Zest explains that Basara's plan is to capture him in order to reach the mansion and destroy its barrier. They start fighting, but Mayo intervenes and is rescued by Yuki. Together, they confront Zest, who reveals to Mayo why Maria cheated on her. Zest attempts to activate Mio's curse, but fails and our protagonist realizes that Zest is jealous of her relationship with Basara. When Jester tried to attack her, Maria gave her a powerful blow. As they observe Maria, they notice that Basara is severely injured, but is still standing despite being attacked by Maria. Finally, he hugged her and asked her to leave everything to her brother. In the middle of the action, the girls manage to stop Jester and Yuki tries to finish her off, but Mayo stops her. Suddenly, Zorgia appears and paralyzes her, casting a spell on Yuki to capture her and accusing Jester of letting Mayo escape. When Zorgia attempts to kill our hero, his spell is interrupted and the humans attempt to attack him. However, Zorgia uses his mind control to paralyze Basara and realize how powerful he is. Suddenly, we see a man entering Zorja's villa, while Maria is in her room remembering how her hero promised to save everyone and left her waiting there. He then attempts to break Zorja's mind control spell when he begins insulting his father. Despite his efforts to attack the villain, he failed and the villain even became invisible, making it difficult for Basara to fight back. By concentrating, he managed to hit the invisible Zorja without causing any damage. Instead, Zorja overwhelms him and starts controlling his mind, making him imagine being with all the girls. Meanwhile, the seal inside Maria's mother's cage begins to break and she realizes something important. When Basara is ruled, Maria appears and begins fighting Zorja. However, he stops her by showing her the cage containing her mother, who is under Zorja's control. The sight weakened Maria. During this time, Maya witnesses Maria's mother's plight and begins to lose control of her powers, which reminds her of her parents. Zorja this vulnerability to control Mio's power, sending everyone away including Jester, although Basara saves her. Zorgia approaches Mio to take her power with what little magic he has left. However, when he touches her, his arm is destroyed and thrown into the air. Zorgia realizes that Mio's power is not that of the previous demon king, but her own. Mio prepares to kill him, but Besari interrupts her and asks her not to kill him as he will protect her like her brother. Our demon princess hesitates, and Zorgia takes the opportunity to escape. Besara asks the girls not to pursue Zorgia, just then Maria's mother appears and our hero explains that she is safe thanks to his accomplices. The villain manages to escape only to encounter Takagawa who reveals that he made a deal with humans. In return for taking the doll into Zorgia's palace and freeing Maria's mother, he was allowed to take care of him personally. Mayo's parents who were killed by villains were actually Takagawa's adoptive parents. After Sierra, Maria's mother explains how she escaped they discover that Zorja's barrier is gone due to a lack of magic. They try to leave, but the palace suddenly transforms into the maw of a giant demon intent on devouring the entire planet. Outside, Zorja tells Takigawa of his plan to have monsters destroy the world so that no one can take Mio away from him, angering Takigawa even more. They assign Maria to take care of Shilo while Basara and the girls go to the monster's weak point, destroy it with strike transformation, and try to save the world. They trust Zest to lead them on this mission. The party moved on, but Zest noticed a change in the monster's structure. They reached the monster's core, but the monster's immune system starts attacking them. Yuki stayed to fight the immune system. 
Jester, Basara, and Mayo head to Zorja's forbidden chamber. Inside, Mayo encounters a demon who looks like Jester and several other clones who attack her. Zeal instructs the team to eliminate the clones and together they defeat them. When they reach the monster's core, they discover that the system is preventing them from destroying it. Zest decided to himself, explaining that the clones were created because Zorja rejected them because she had a heart. Mayo pleads with her not to herself, but her enthusiasm distracts the monster, allowing Basara to attack and ultimately defeat it. Zorja was shocked and horrified. After waking up, Zest realizes that our heroes saved her before delivering the final blow. She tells Sheila that he saved her life, and now it's up to him to decide what to do with her. However, when everyone woke up, they found that he was missing. Meanwhile, Zorja is being by Takigawa, who mentions that someone wants to see him defeated. Zorja believed he could control Takigawa, but to his surprise, the person Takigawa was referring to turned out to be Basara. Zorja pleads with our protagonist to spare him, but Takigawa ignores his pleas and orders his friends to attack and defeat Zorja, ultimately him. At home, Basara reflects on his actions and remembers that his father trusted him. He spots Yuki sitting with Jester and advises Jester to change her lifestyle. Yugi warns him that many people will follow Mio, and he promises to inform them if anything happens as he plans to visit Maria and her bussy boss. Later, our protagonist discovers Maria sleeping with her mother and goes into Mio's room to give her a glass of warm milk to calm her nerves. He realizes that because of this pact, she might go crazy if someone takes her and decides to be the first to do so. However, he holds back and Mio asks him to kiss her again. Yuki appears and witnesses this, leading to a confrontation between Yuki and Mio. Basara seeks help from Maria, who considers leaving due to guilt. When the girls argue, he asks her to intervene. Maria was happy because they needed her and suddenly kissed our lucky guy too, which caused even more excitement. Afterwards, Sheila and Jester return to the demon realm with other demons and the lives of the group continued peacefully. In the demon realm, the demon king learns of Zorja's and assigns one of his assistants to investigate. However, when the assistant entered the throne, he found that all the guards had been defeated and Jin was sitting on the throne. King thanks the assistant for taking care of his children and promises to return the favor with a sinister smile. Wow, what happy ending. Before starting the next season, let's take a look at the brief OVA that will be released after the end of the first season. The OVA begins with Maria cooking in the kitchen while paying attention to the presence she feels. Suddenly, she found something strange on the second floor. After investigating, she discovered that Maya was dreaming about Basara. Maria uses her magic camera to see Mayo's dream, but she wakes up. Maria uses magic to put her back to sleep, but this causes her to have a physical dream. To keep her dream going, Maria pretends to be our protagonist, teasing her, until the real person interrupts and stops Maria in her tracks. Back in the kitchen, Maria prepares a meal for our hero and lets him try it. After trying on, he discovered that it was actually Mayo's Before the guy could react, his violent nature kicked in and he drew his sword. Yuki intervenes, taking Maria's and offering it to Basara to eat but Basara refuses. Yuki then tries to seduce him by for clothes, but they are interrupted by a jealous Mio, who electrocutes Basara and Maria. Later at school, our guy went to see the nurse after getting hurt in gym class. There he saw Hazagawa in a and Hazagawa asked for help in with his clothes because he was stuck. After applying some cream, our man managed to take but he was embarrassed by the situation. After school, Hazagawa invites Basara to have dinner with her and plans to take him to her house. There she offered him lots of food and asked him to give her a funny hug while he washed. Hazagawa then asked him to take a shower with her scent, which the girls and his family would notice. The man agreed, but then the nurse joined him and began soaping him, causing him to lose control and eventually pass. When he woke up, he was lying in Hazagawa's lap, unsure if what was happening was a dream or reality. Thinking about what happened, he decided to change and leave. Jin begins fighting the current demon king Leo Hart, believing him to be responsible for some bad things happening in the human world, while Leo Hart also realizes Jin's power and the reason why he is called the god of During the battle, Leo Hart accidentally destroys a castle tower, and Jin notices someone being knocked unconscious. He rushes to the rescue and then leaves. Meanwhile, Mio dreams about Basara so often that she feels embarrassed at breakfast. However, their conversation is interrupted by Maria, who brings more food and asks to be allowed to attend the school's sports festival, since she is under house Along the way, Mayo and Yuki are surprised to discover that their lover is a member of the festival committee, and later hear him explain that he wants to enjoy school like a normal student. At school, he's with Tachibana, a shy boy who is also a committee member on Hazegawa's recommendation, and she meets him in the hallway. As Hazegawa leaves, Basara senses someone is watching them, but they continue on their way. 
When Tachibana talks about how she joined the committee, our heroine thinks she did so because of Hasengawa's influence. Later, they entered a classroom and saw some boys arguing. One of them ran out of f***ers and along with his friends planned to crash the party by targeting the girl he was arguing with. Basara steps in to stop them. Hezegawa arrived in time to prevent the fight from escalating further. It's obvious that Tachibana is using some kind of hypnosis and the boys are following Hazagawa's orders. The teacher takes the protagonist aside and advises him to solve problems alone in the future and stay away from Hasegawa, who seems to have an attractive charm that arouses Bisara's suspicion. Meanwhile, Mayo and Yuki return home and encounter Takagawa, who is angry because he now knows their identities. The girls got worried and went home. They still remembered their previous conversation with Takagawa about how to control Basara to prevent his power from getting out of control. At night, Basara leaves the store with his classmates and teachers when a barrier suddenly appears. People at the bus stop attack him with magic like zombies before he realizes they are being controlled. Kurumi appears and uses her powers to defeat the affected people without harming them. She then comes to Basara and tells him that she is here to help Yuki. She asks if anyone suspects him because of the strange atmosphere at his school. When they return home, they find everything is dark, and when they enter the living room, they see Mayo and Yuki dressed as puppies. Maria playfully throws Basara and takes off his shoes so the girls can play with his feet to increase their strength. Kurumi becomes angry and scolds them for their behavior, which makes Mio embarrassed and runs away. After explaining the servant master contract to Kurumi, Yuki asks her why she did this, but Kurumi is still angry at her sister. Maria steps in and uses Kurumi's innocence to deceive her, giving her a baptism. This allows Kurumi to feel how others feel when the curse is activated and helps her understand their perspective. Basara and Yuki are asked to help Kurumi overcome the effects of the baptism. After doing so, Kurumi fell asleep with Yuki taking care of her. Our hero asks Maria why she did this, and she explains that she has a sister who might judge the decision she has to make, and she doesn't want the same thing to happen between Yuki and Kurumi. Finally, Basara is standing on top of a building, thinking about who might be controlling others and wishing to harm them with Hazegawa coming to mind. He decided that no matter who it was, he had to defeat them because he was determined to protect the girls. The festival continues and we see Mio getting ready with her friends while Basara joins Tachibana in handing out festival passes. They talk about how the Dunyu family, the ones who caused the fight at the school, apologized. Kurumi arrives and Basara introduces her. Soon after, our protagonist leaves and tells Takibana that they will catch up later. He meets up with Yuki and Mio to stop his attacker. They see this incident as an opportunity to control these people. And as Maria says, the perpetrators must be very powerful. After Rika Kajira gave a speech, the competition began. Karumi summons her air spirit to look for the suspicious person and discovers Tachibana, who realizes that Karumi is a hero and becomes suspicious of our people. In a four-related competition, Mio, Yuki, and our protagonist compete and ultimately win. Hasegawa congratulates them, but Beisara remains distant as he is suspicious of them. Karumi senses Tachibana's presence and Dansu attacks him with magic, creating an earth whirlwind. Bisara's attack draws them in, and Tachibana realizes that he too is a hero. They begin fighting when Tachibana believes they want to eliminate him because he is a vampire. Meanwhile, the girls encounter Hasegawa, who suddenly loses her presence when our protagonist realizes they're in the infirmary. He defeats Tachibana and rushes there. Hasegawa stops him and breaks his sword. As Bisara tried to advance the magic seal on Hasegawa, Mr. Sakazaki appears and takes him away. He reveals that he is an old friend of Bisara's father, and was entrusted with protecting him and tells Hazagoa that he is a truly powerful being, on par with S-class demons. While still in the classroom, our protagonist realizes that Sakazaki is the real enemy, as his father would never expose Mio to such a powerful enemy without telling him anything. Sakazaki reveals God's true form and the two begin to fight. Basara tries hard to hurt him until the god reveals Kurumi to him and to devour her. Basara agreed to stop fighting and the god off his arm. Basara lay on the ground, the god ready to f*** him. Suddenly, humans unleashed an unknown force to harm the gods. Still, they tried to f*** Basara, but it seemed like many chains were holding him back. Hazegawa arrives and calls the god Onus, who calls the nurse F. Lee. She in turn says that he is an idiot for breaking the seal of Basara's Valkyrie Brynhildr, an extremely powerful being who was the reason why he lost control. Despite the warning, Onus attempted to take advantage of the fact that Hasegawa was unable to fully unleash his power and f*** humans again. She tells him that she has gained support from some gods and can unleash her power to protect Basara. She prepares to f*** and reveals that our hero is the only proof that her mother is alive, which is why she will always defend him and destroy Onus.
Hezagawa calms the out-of-control Basara by controlling his mind. She then tells him that she will erase everyone's memories and alter their memories so that he will never discover his origins or his two mothers. Later, our protagonist talks to Takibana and explains that he is no longer a hero and will not hurt him. At home, he remembered the victory over Onis and felt protected during the battle. The girls entered his room with Maria and Kurumi. Maria's scolding triggered her curse, and she gave Kurumi another baptism. Basara comforted her. Maria's sister Lucia arrives and invites her to the Demon Realm on behalf of the moderate faction. In the Demon Realm, Leohart and his team discovered an ancient machine that the Council wanted to use to destroy the Conservatives, but Leohart opposed it and wanted to defeat the Council. Gaul volunteered to lead the attack on the Council, while Blaster stayed behind to protect Leohart and support his goal of destroying the Council. They discuss how to provoke the Council to attack first, and Lars suggests stealing Mayo's power since she will be in the Demon Realm. Rukia talks to her master Ramses and mentions that Kloss and his nobles are gathering followers of the former demon lord. After returning home, Rukia reveals that Ramses is the brother of the former demon king, making him Mayo's uncle. They decided to go to the demon realm to seek support from the Ramses faction. Mayo was hesitant at first, but agreed with everyone's support and called Rukia to embark on the journey to the demon realm together. Arriving at the castle of Wildet, which once belonged to Wilbur and now belongs to Ramses, the party was surprised by its beauty and tranquility. Besara asks Rukia to immediately arrange a meeting with Ramses. However, they learned that Ramses was gone and were put to rest in a filthy room. Zest, now a maid at the castle, joins them for dinner, and they are glad she is okay. Sheila appears, and demonstrating her ability to travel through space tunnels, and reveals herself to be Jester's personal maid. Maria walked away quietly amid the laughter. Lucia reveals to Maria that Ramses tasked her with punishing her for her behavior towards Zorja. Bessara intervenes and uses Shira's time tunnel to stop Rukia from punishing Maria, begging her not to be punished. The fact that he agrees to carry out the punishment himself leads to a rather amusing rebuke that leads Maria to anger Bessara over the curse she received from Rukia. Puto, who witnessed everything, rushed into the room and Lucia also gave her a baptism. Bessara stops Rukia from punishing Kurumi, and she tells him he has to do it again, resulting in yet another interesting punishment. When they returned to the others, they wondered what had taken so long. Beisara helps Kurumi increase her strength. Rukia notices that Kurumi now has a friend. They later meet Lord Kloss, an ancient demon who recognizes the group and introduces himself as King Wilbert's former strategist. He apologized for the shabby room and took her to a more suitable room. Cross discusses the conflict between Leohart's faction and the conservative faction that remained loyal to the late king. Many people recognized Mio and celebrated her arrival. They explore the demon world and find that it is similar to their world, but filled with demonic particles and the hero's power has been reduced by half. As they drink tea at a cafe, Zest leaves to avoid trouble, but is met by soldiers who insult her for being Zorja's servant. Bessara intervenes and helps Jester escape. When she returned to the group, Jester's heel was broken and Bessara carried her back to the others. In the evening, they arrive at the castle and Ramses appears, impressing everyone. Inside the castle, each girl has a room. Kurumi remembers the amulet Rukia gave her to protect Maria, and Maria comes over to tease Kurumi. Maya was by the maid and Noel, who grew up with him, asked about Lars. Ramses is looking at the moon when Bessara approaches him and asks to talk. Bessara confronts Ramses, accusing him of wanting to take power from Mayo, even if it hurts her, and questioning Ramses' right to rule. Ramses replies that it is Mayo's duty, no matter the consequences. He referred to the agreement, but denied his opponent the right to rule. Our angry hero is about to summon his sword, but Rukia and Sheila intervene. Sierra went to the shower with her husbands and Zester joined them. Guess what? He once again made a deal with Zest to prevent her from running away if things got worse. The curse activates when Zest thinks she's a burden, but it calms her down. A battle broke out in the city between guards, monsters, and Jester's puppets in Basara. Mio, Noel, and the others watch as our protagonist fights against Geld's power. Mayo remembers Bestara's promise that they would always fight together and decides to help him. He manages to severely injure Gald, but a mysterious light surrounds them and causes massive destruction. He falls, burns, and is injured next to Mayo. Nembra and Jelder plan to take away Mayo's power, but Nembra wants to eliminate everyone to fulfill the Council's wishes. Zest and our men fight Gald, but the humans have a problem. Unable to watch, Mayo tries to help and is once again reminded of Bestara's promise. Gold tried to attack, but a beam hit them both, causing massive damage. Ramses disagreed with Leohart gaining more power and intervened with a gravity spell to protect her. Mio escapes, confronts Nibra and defeats her. 
The villain detonates the but Ramses shrinks her with another spell and then activates the self-destruct spell. But when our heroes face her, may have defeats her. Eventually, just as she was about to reveal her true command, the evil one was destroyed by her curse. Finally, we see Mayo saying goodbye to Claus, thanking him for his warm welcome, but telling him that she would rather continue living as a human than inherit her father's position. Meanwhile, a city has been rebuilt and Ramses tells Rukia that the mission to take power away from Mio has been suspended due to changes in circumstances. Just then, as the group was about to leave the kingdom, Jin's appearance surprised them. On the other hand, Jelder told Leohard about the dimensional fluctuations caused by Bissara's power and sensed Brynhildr's power, who set off a supersonic whirlwind causing Gelder to lose all. Leohard ordered Gold to rest, but as he left he realized the power the others had and how difficult it would be to defeat them. Just then, Leohard's sister Lyra appears, sensing something is wrong and suggesting that he do what they usually do that night. We later see them taking a shower together, and although Lyra playfully attacks, she ends up destroying a large portion of the road, right where Lars was standing, and when he sees Lyra's power, he becomes fear. Later, Leohard announced that there would be a 7 vs 7 battle, and the winner would decide the fate of the demon world. Ramses tells King that he must accept it, despite King's warning that this could be a trap for the council, and that the price will apparently be millions. They begin to discuss how Ramses thought Leohard was manipulable, and that's why the council chose him. But King told him that despite being at the crime scene, he never found Zafia. Suddenly, Sheila appears and says that Zafia is obviously not in the demon world, and they should focus on how to deal with the competition. Meanwhile, the boys take a shower, Besara lifts Mio's curse, and Ramses tells Jin that he won't leave everything to them. King then stated that he would train them so that they could achieve victory. The next day, training begins with Besara struggling to attack his father despite his attempts to outwit him. His father taught him to deceive his enemies by throwing him onto a rock and telling them they could rest now. As he rests, Cain tells Basara about Leohard's fighting abilities, but assures him that by thinking about how to fight and showing his greatest strength, he can defeat him. Jin creates obstacles and wants to teach Basara a harsh lesson. He unleashed all of his powers, sending a strong wind emanating from Jin's body as he told Basara not to back down. Meanwhile, the girls are being trained by Sheila and Leo wants to learn to control Wilbur's powers, Sheila explains that she must first understand her strengths before she can control them, for example, she activates a curse on all the girls. After eating a few pieces of candy, they can calm down. Sheila explains that she has developed a pill to lift the curse, but warns her that the closer they become to Basara, the harder it will be to find him. Suddenly, everything starts to shake and they realize that a huge force is coming from the Audra forest. Karuvi transports them there, where they find Basara injured from training with Jin. Seeing the destruction, Yuki remembered what happened in the village. Kane woke his son and told him that he wouldn't give it all unless he valued the idea of gaining power at the cost of his life. He then asked him how he felt at that moment when he thought he might. Bessar remembers that his only concern was protecting the girls. Jin tells him to remember that feeling, regain it, and release his stored energy in a charge attack, just like he did in the village. This sends Bessar into a panic, but his father calms him down and continues talking about his power, mentioning three limiting factors, one being conscious, the hatred of virtue. Basara must release at least two limiters to defeat Leo Hart. Jin tells him that while they want to protect Mayo, if they win, they will insist on making her queen. And if they lose, they will lose their power. There was a third option, however, and Kim promised to support him if it failed. Finally, Kim sits next to our hero and tells him about his two mothers. Meanwhile, Yuki wants to visit Basara, but is hesitant. Our protagonist is on the castle roof recalling his father's words about the limiter. Suddenly, he remembered the girls, summoned his sword, and launched an attack that Yuki could feel from a distance. The next day, the protagonist goes to Sheila to ask for her help. Meanwhile, the team sets off to fight, with Rukia telling Ramses that he will join them later. Leohart was waiting for her on his throne. Upon arrival, Leohart recognized the group and then another demon, Belfior, a member of the council and Zorge's hair, appeared and claimed power over the playroom. Leohart accepted. Outside, Besara discovers that the council and the king don't get along as his father said. On the way, he met Lars, who asked them not to be too strict with them the next day. Back in their room, Besara tells the girls that their faction believes in them and reminds them that he must free at least two of the limiters. Although Maria looked worried, she tried to calm him down and the girls begged them to be stronger. Meanwhile, Belfigor strengthens himself with the help of his servants, determined to win the game and gain millions of dollars. The girls continue to train with Besara. The next day, Ramses brought Lucia and Noel to Leohart's castle. The girls were resting and Mio noticed Basara leaving the room. 
Later, our protagonist meets Takagawa in a tavern and asks him for a favor, buy him a certain perfume and at the same time explain to him his plan. Meanwhile, Yuki dreams that all her friends have disappeared and Besara appears with a manical look in his eyes ready to end his life. She wakes up scared and Kurumi hears her worry. Takagawa, wearing a Lars mask, buys perfume for Basara and wonders what he plans to do. Mado finds him on the phone at night and asks if he is contacting his father. He says they should regain their composure, she hugs him and he tells her to trust him no matter what. This leads to an intimate moment between them where she asks him to continue dominating her. That they take a together. The next day as the game begins, Leohart realizes that the crowd is just an excuse for the council to take action. Mio steps forward, declares that she will not fight as Wilbert's daughter, but as herself, and begins to fight. Before the battle, Leohart received a call from Madonis, who mentioned that Belfinger had been missing since the night before and that something seemed to be wrong with one of the members. They suspected the security council was involved. The battle begins and Mio confronts Luca, who summons a heroic spirit. Although Mio takes a direct hit, his heroic spirit regenerates and he fights back. Mio remembers Basara leaving before the battle, saying he had to do something but would come back. When the heroic spirit attempts to defeat her, Mayo activates her power and eliminates her in one blow defeating Luca. After the battle, Maria congratulated Mio, and then it was Maria's turn. Ramses and his servants watch all this and Rukia hoped that Maria would do her best. Maria starts fighting with Lars and Noel witnesses the fight and accidentally drops the tea in shock and worry. Before the fight begins, Maria asks Lars why he betrayed her, but he refuses to answer and they begin to fight. Although Lars gained the upper hand and dominated Maria, Maria unleashed her full strength, transformed into an adult, gained strength, and overpowered Lars. Noel watches the battle and remembers Lars as a child supporting everyone as they destroy the orphanage. Lars recovered, however, and when he realized Maria had not fully mastered her powers, he defeated her. The audience asks Lars to for them, but he becomes enraged and yells that he himself decides who to devour by leaving. This calmed Noel down as he saw Lars was still the same person. Yuki and Kurume witnessed all this and before Kurume went into battle, she told her sister that she could do whatever she wanted, and everyone believed her. Yuki hugged her and cried. At the same time, Besara appeared outside the door of a palace, sword in hand. Kurume returns to the battlefield and is about to fight Lord Mardona's servant Vice Count Admira, who gives her a button before the battle and says Bezara's fate depends on her. Meanwhile, Maria is seriously injured in the infirmary and Mayo and Yuki are taking care of her. Luca was also shocked. Leohart's people realize what Admiras did to Hulumi and Brassville says she will investigate the council's plans as the time to attack has not yet come. Admiras summons his steed and defeats Kurumi in battle. As he was about to her, Jester intervened and stopped Admiras from doing so. The council appears on the screen and accepts Kurumi's defeat, but declares Zest an automatic defeat due to interference. The girls are worried because they know if they lose the next game, it's over. Enthusiasm takes Kurume to find Yuki, and they find the button that Admiras gave her. Yuki decided to take revenge. Admiras was praised by the council, but sensed a presence and attacked, but failed to hit anything. It turns out that Brassfield overheard the council's secret plan. The battle continues with Yuki facing a demon named Volda, Varga's younger brother who was previously by her. Yuki destroys him with one strike. Now the girls believe Rukia must fight, but Mio believes Basara will return. Brassfield suddenly discovers the Parliament's machinery and Leohart and Lars discuss Lars' disappearance. Leohart trusted Brath to fear, but Raz reminded him that the Council could still exploit this. During the battle, Leohart ends up replacing Brassifer and Rukia comes over to tell the boys that Ramses will fight in Basara's place. Suddenly, the battlefield turned into the demon King Samdu surrounded by lava. Rukia explains to the girls that only Ramses can fight on this battlefield due to his royal blood. Meanwhile, Besari is seriously injured in the forest and goes into battle. Leohart began to believe that fighting Ramses would end any hope of Wilbert line dominance. Besara suddenly appeared in front of him. The council believed that Besara must have broken the barrier with the annihilation technique. The battle begins. King rests in Ramses' palace, and although one of the servants scolds him for not seeing the battle, he says our hero only has a 20% chance of winning. The girls watch the fight with Zest explaining that Bestara cannot use the beat transformation as it would make him vulnerable for a short period of time, which could be fatal. However, Maiwa still believes that his lover will win. Bestara uses the perfume Takigawa bought him to multiply himself. However, although Leohart fought back, his illusions and attacks were shattered. The fight continues and the girls notice Bestara's injuries. Finally, Leohart threw him into the air and he hit the edge of the battlefield, 
falling towards the lava. At this critical moment, Bessar remembered the pills Shara gave him, which could release the power given to him by his mother's blood. To protect the girls, he takes the pill and falls into the lava. But just as Leohart thinks he's won, he unleashes all of his power. Bessar emerges from the lava, displaying the power expected of a demon lord. He defeated Leohart, but his body began to as he could not withstand the force. The girls realize that if their lover continues like this, he will destroy himself. However, our men seem to lose control and continue to attack Leohart. Mayo runs to save him, and just as our now crazy protagonist is about to Leohart, Mio directly attacks him. Suddenly, Bessara wakes up in his house, reality begins to fall apart, and he finds himself in school, where reality continues to fall apart. People start attacking Mayo in the spirit world until our hero hears Maria's voice and realizes he's in his own head. Mayo reached out to him and he took her hand. In his mind, she faces Zorgia, who is trying to take her power from within. Mayo senses Besara's presence, destroys Zorgia, and discovers our protagonist's complete form. Still, our man lost control and tried to n the demon girl, but he stopped, destroyed his armor, and regained consciousness. Mayo hugged him and apologized for her exaggerated behavior. Basara loses control again and destroys Mayo's clothes, but she allows it on the condition that he returns to her. This calmed him down completely. Back on the battlefield, a wise hero apologizes to our demon princess, but she reminds him that he asked her to trust him. They reach Leohart, and our hero shakes his hand. Meanwhile, the council discovers that Belfigur has been implements their second plan by summoning the god of heroes. A huge being called Chaos emerged from the sky, a demon of infernal fire. The council believed that the kingdom was now theirs as Chaos destroyed the entire battlefield. A member of the council is concerned about Ramses and the other obstacles, but they remind him that Chaos can control other heroic spirits and destroy all their enemies. Suddenly, a security guard informed them that there was Chaos, summon more and more heroic spirits and put them into an emergency situation. If this continues, the entire demon world will be reduced to ashes. The council was unconcerned and was impressed by the power of Chaos, planning to rebuild the world and wage another war against the gods. After guards, they discovered that Admiras had also disappeared, leaving to take care of some business. In the chaos, Basara, Leohart, and Leo survive with the power of heroes. The committee concluded that their injuries did not allow them to continue fighting. The girls hear destruction outside, and Rukia decides to check on Ramses. Admiras appears and tells them not to worry as they will all be devoured there. Chaos then launched an extremely powerful attack that destroyed everything. Holy in the final episode, we witnessed how Leohart and the boys managed to hide while the chaos wreak havoc. Although Mio tells them that they can break down barriers and unite everyone, Leohart explains that everything outside must remain the same and they must fight alone. Meanwhile, the girls prepare to fight Admiras, but suddenly their energy begins to run out. Still, Yuki faces a fight. On the other side, Jester fights the heroic spirits, while Basara, Mio, and Leohart fight chaos on the battlefield. Just as Chaos was about to overwhelm them, Ramses appeared and attacked, throwing Chaos away. Meanwhile, Admiras weakens the girls and is about to attack Kurumi, when Maria intervenes. She cuts one of Admiras' arms and before he can grab the spear, Kurumi cuts his other arm and throws him out of the building. Maria follows him and starts beating him down, knocking him out. In another scene, we see Noel trying to save a girl, but a heroic ghost appears and is about to attack her, when Takigawa steps in and destroys the ghost. Back on the battlefield, Ramses attempts to control the chaos while the boys formulate a plan to defeat him. Basara realizes the only way is to create a black hole like Mio did when he lost control. He explains the plan to Mio and asks for her trust again. Together, they set off to face chaos with Leohart trying to stop him. Mayo activated her power and chaos was swallowed by the black hole. Basara takes pills to unlock his potential and our demon princess contributes her power to activate them, making him a more powerful hero. Bexara pushed Chaos into the black hole with one strike. Mayo was exhausted and broken, and so were all the souls, no longer in control. Bexara returned to his normal state and went to check on Mayo. The council members were surprised by this and considered putting their ultimate plan to destroy everything into action, but Lyra intervened and defeated them. She senses Jin's presence and realizes that he also wants to eliminate the council elders. She felt the aura of Jin's ancient dragon and explained why his son could use this technique. Lyra considers fighting our hero, but she stops when she realizes that he is Lar's friend and wants him to be Leohart's friend as well. She says goodbye and leaves, Jin and his son prepare to fight, but Takigawa appears, causing Lyra to retreat. She congratulates Basara on his victory and leaves. 
Later, they discover Belfira's body in the palace and Lyra realizes that the protagonist is the one who defeated him, although she doesn't understand why he risked everything to fight Leah Hart. Afterwards, Jin tells Ramses how our protagonists changed history, and how the demon world can finally be at peace without Mayo being disturbed. We see Lyra realize her mistake but try to hide it from her brother. Oh, Takigawa remembers rescuing the protagonist in the middle of the forest. Eventually, the boys return to the human world, and that night, Bessara had a nightmare about a Mio, worrying that he would lose her. However, Mio wakes up and asks to play with him. The other girls interrupt him and want to be with him too, leading to a funny argument and peace being restored to the world. What a great ending! But we still have two OVAs, so stay tuned. In the second OVA, we see Maria waking up Bessara in his room and he realizes that she has snuck in. He gets annoyed with her behavior and something strange happens, he ends up playfully holding her in a fugue. Later, our man goes to Mayo's room to wake her up and finds her nightgown open, Duga Maria's prank. He tries to solve the problem, but is caught by Yuki, who also wants to get his attention. Mayo wakes up, notices her clothes, gets angry and scolds our heroes. Then Basara playfully pulled Maria back. At school, Mayo remembers Yuki's words about showing her and becomes angry when she sees Maria tearing her uniform. In order to fight against Mio, Yuki also tried cutting off her uniform. In physical education class, Yuki and the protagonist went to get the ball, and the protagonist, Yuki, in various embarrassing situations in order to protect her. Mayo interrupts and confronts her, leading to a small argument. He later wakes up in the infirmary where Hazekawa tells him that the girls are fine and that she's worried about him. Of course, she tries to seduce him, which makes him nervous. Later that night, Maria tells Basara that it's Mayo's birthday the next day and they should plan a surprise for her. They brainstorm until Yuki joins them and assures them that any gift he gives will be appreciated. After they fell asleep, our men visited Mayo's room. Suddenly, the door closes and our demon princess starts to behave seductively. He realizes that Maria is behind the vision. But the little devil used magic to create an alternative scene, telling him that it was a barrier that had no effect on the real world. In the fantasy, Maria attends a festival with Yuki. While playing, they get into various situations and end up embracing each other during a fireworks display. But the fantasy begins to falter and Maria realizes this could be dangerous. Meanwhile, under the influence of hallucinations, our boys and girls start kissing and playing with each other. But when the magic wears off, they all come to their senses. Maria explains the time limit of her illusion magic and is playfully scolded by everyone. Back at home, Mio explains that it's not actually her birthday and Maria admits that she's confused by the time difference between the human and demon worlds. This unnerves our demon princess, but Maria starts planning more things for the actual date which makes Mayo even more frustrated. We begin our final film with the three older men discussing the issues caused by Basara's actions and how this affects the hero village including Jin's actions. They decided not to miss it. Next, we see Basara taking a shower with Jester until they are interrupted by a girl who starts taking a shower with him. Later, we see Ramses talking to our men about maintaining peace in their world and criticizing him for keeping his distance from Mayo. He says he understands why King Wilbert left to protect them and thinks Basara cares about Mayo equally and keeps his distance, but he should at least say goodbye. He leaves and thanks him for protecting her. We go back to the moment when Mayo is taking a shower and Basara and Maria is sprayed with an ass, causing the girls to lose control. They then scolded and tied Maria so that she would never do anything like that again, even though Maria realized that Mayo only wanted to do this with her husband. During the meal, everyone praised Jester's breakfast, including Basara, which made Mio jealous. She announced that she would start cooking the next day and Maria suggested that they take turns preparing meals to which everyone agreed. Suddenly, they see an advertisement for a public swimming pool and Maria advises everyone to take a trip even though it's winter. As her hero agrees, all the girls want to go too. All this is spied on by a bird from the devil's realm. By the pool, the girls were wearing and everyone's eyes were focused on them until Bessara met Tachibana and Kajura who also went to the pool and even met Takikawa. But he finally told him that he had been sent to be overseer of hell and must remain where they were. They had a fun day by the pool while Maria took photos of everything, but eventually got stopped. Suddenly, the church bells rang and when Mayo and Basara saw the bells, they realized it was a wedding. This leads to a discussion about when they will get married, but then they meet Hasegawa, who tells them that she is there to investigate where the students spend their time. Some of the kids urged them on and Hasegawa took the opportunity to ask him if he hadn't forgotten their promise to travel. After Hasegawa leaves, Mayo activates the curse out of jealousy. When Maria is released, she sees Becerra taking Mayo away, and they try to hide. Maria, including him, they then kiss and head to the hot springs where they start playing. 
Meanwhile, the girls gather in Yuki's room and Maria sees a photo of Yuki, Kurumi, and Basara as children before the incident, which leaves Mio in deep thought. Meanwhile, Yuki is taking a shower, recalling what happened when Basara was exiled and thinking about how she couldn't protect him or follow him. Since she didn't say anything before, she no longer has any rights over him. But Mayo interrupts her thoughts and asks her how she really feels. Mayo has helped her a lot so far and asks her to let her help too, and they can help Basara together as she wants to share her pain. When Yuki reacted, she realized Mayo was hugging her and starting to dry her off. She explained that she was doing this because of Maria and because she wanted to talk to her without being disturbed. That night, Basara sleeps on Hazegawa's lap, and she tells him that she will give him his future power. She grows wings, and through a kiss, we see her transfer her magic to him. He woke up the next morning and saw Hazegawa getting ready. When he returned to the city, he remembered Hazegawa's advice. He began to think that everything could have been avoided if he had not returned to the hero village, but he remembered his childhood and realized that he was afraid of going back. Our hero then meets Takagawa, who tells him it's time to get started. However, we see them eating together and discussing his upcoming actions in Hero Village. Takigawa explained his concerns about his attitude towards the faction and fear that he might take action that might ruin everything. He makes it clear that he is not Basara's friend, but the person responsible for monitoring him, and that he will destroy everything to protect Mio. Meanwhile, the girls prepare plenty of food for Basara. Jester notices that he is late and Kuruma comments that they are like a group of women waiting for their husbands. This prompted Maria to suggest that they all marry him. Basara and Takigawa then arrive in an abandoned park, where a fight breaks out. You see that guy defending his future with the girls. Although Takigawa seemed to have the upper hand, he managed to dodge his attack. In defense, the demon ended up using a clone of Basara, which prevented the real demon from using his banishment transformation. Eventually, the clone seemed to gain the upper hand. As he is about to defeat Masato, he begins to recall memories of Mio. Suddenly, he regains his physical strength and strength, allowing him to defeat the clone and point his sword directly at Takigawa, triggering a burst of power. The scene then returns to reality, with Takigawa admitting that he can neither defeat nor stop Basara. He allowed him to do whatever he wanted as long as he kept his will strong. When our hero returns home, he is surprised to find the girls dressed as brides. Maria's idea, they explained, was to strengthen family ties and alliance trust. Mio begins to scold Basara for always taking risks for her sake, and doubts her ability to fight alongside him. This triggered her curse. Basara realizes that the hero village may see him as a problem and that he should go alone. But Yuki also starts blaming him, which triggers her curse, followed by Ri and Kurumi. They all express their willingness to accompany him and fight side by side. Basara accepts her determination and agrees to take her with him. He then proceeds to kiss each of them, intending to strengthen their bond by making them his wives. Maria's help had significantly increased her and now he had to calm them both down. Afterwards, you can see all the girls relax. Basara apologizes to Mio and assures her that he recognizes them as family. They were ready to leave, all ready to accompany him. Mio prepared food for everyone for the trip, but they started eating it right away. Finally, Basara declares it's time to leave. This is a package. See you later, guys.